So really knowing that the self that I am I can experience the breathing of the body here and now. I can experience the sound of words and thoughts here and now. The ebb and the flow of sensations of the body-mind, all as impermanent temporary experiences and I illumine all of it Can you see this here? Beyond the sanskars, beyond the breath of the body, beyond the sensations of sanskars, beyond the sight, smell, taste, touch. You, the self, is not in any of these. As Baba says, there's no drama in the subtle and the incorporeal dimension. There's no story there. So this dimension is not somewhere else. It's the consciousness awakening. Now. Be aware of whatever the experience may be right now in body mind. Be aware. Notice it as this being of light. Is the breath defining you the being of light? Do you need the breath to stay alive? The being of light? Or are you enabling the breathing for the mechanisms of the body? Even I and mine, unconsciously to the breathing, personal identity is born. Are you personalizing your sitting here? 
the position of the body. And the current experience. Observe. Even if it is so, that's okay. Know you are just a being, a living light, experiencing a temporary experience of body's position and the current experience. Anything different about you? The light. Then what it was. According to your mind's eye. A few moments ago. Have you ever changed? Will you ever change? Is it even possible? This is why objectifying all experiences, doesn't matter how subtle they may be, how subtle the feelings may be, is the end of suffering. Because all experiences are impermanent, transient. Unconscious personalization. Notice is happening. Even that can be seen. From a distance. By the living light with Baba. Because Baba is the only one. Who's seeing you as you are. Is he defining you by any sanskars that are constantly playing within you, the soul? 
This eternal drama is constantly playing within you. What is Baba's vision doing to you? Feel it now. Feel does not mean some mind is trying to feel something. Just know it now. Let whatever emerges, emerge now in front of Baba. As a being of light, immersed in his vision, aware of the play of sanskars, Baba is not seeing you as some face with some story or a name. Just pure presence. Silent being with ever changing. Cycle of some scars within it. That's how Baba is seeing. But his interest is in you. Not the imagination within you. The one beyond concepts, beyond imagination.
Baba came in your life without you even knowing it. Remerging the wisdom, the clarity, every moment with his light. without his attention on the soul. The truth remains incognito and hidden. So there is a very natural knowing for the being that in Baba's company alone can the truth shine. And everything opens up in a natural way. In his light and in his might. This clear seeing merges the pride of a doer And then the oneness of being like the Father emerges naturally. It becomes clear, I am doing nothing, but actions are unfolding as they are supposed to. When I am with the Father, then the actions are not suffered.
you are not averse to any action. but allowing the expression to take place naturally. Fears are not motivating your actions. Somebody is not motivating your actions. Some desire for reward is not motivating your actions. But actions are just happening. And if for some reason something else could be the motivator of your actions at this point, again, you're not fighting that, but just notice it. and surrender it to Baba. And see just Baba and I. No leader. No falsehood in it. No story, no thought needed to be with him. Everything else is false. No experience of any feeling, any thought is true except this knowing and being one with him.
see the ever-changing experiences with him. He's my partner, my companion, with whom I notice and share ever-changing experiences of mind and body and the world. Knowing nothing is ever-changing about me and my Baba and my companionship with him. Baba's not labeling anything, but just watching it as a passing show of ever changing and scars. Shining light on my constant truth, which is beyond display of sunscars. What comes in my inner world, what goes, who comes, who goes in the outer world, nothing matters. Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. So when Baba said yes on Sunday, Bab Dada also told you two words earlier, Sati and Sakshi. So when Bab Dada is with you, your stage of a detached observer is very strong. All of you say that Bab Dada is with you. Bab Dada is with you. However, you also have some influence of Maya over you 
when you say that Bab Dada is with you? <laughs> what does that mean? But you do not use his companionship at a time of need. You put him aside at that time. When someone is with you or when a task comes up, when a situation arises, you do not remember the company you have, but you become engrossed in the situation. You believe that you have this company and you also experience it. Would any of you say that you do not have this company, child? None of you would say this. All of you say, Baba is with me. None of you say, Baba is with you. Each of you say, Baba is with me. Baba is my companion. He is, is he not? Do you say this in your mind or with your lips? So what do you take? What does it mean? Why Baba is saying that? You have some influence of Maya over you when you say that Bab Dada is with you or Bab Dada is some influence of Maya. What does that mean? What is, is Maya? Sunday. Today's Sunday. Sunday Muli. What is Maya? Hmm? What's the date? Sunday Murli, Sunday. This month of 10th of this month. 10th. Mm -hmm. What is Maya? Thoughts. Is thoughts Maya? <laughs> so whatever mind thinks is Maya. Uh -huh. Are we combined or do we remember? I don't know. Maya is Maya just for saying that Baba is with me. Like in Bhakti Mark, uh, we used to remember God. Ki God is with us. But uh, we don't know the real truth of ourselves. So that is Baba is saying. Ki just by saying you say that Baba is with you. Baba, Baba. You just keep uttering Baba word. But do you remember me literally? Okay, no. Let's just look at it again. What is Maya? Let us look at it again. The scripted mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. It is the scripted mind. And it is identification with every experience that is temporary within my body and mind. When I'm saying I and mind to impermanent experiences that are constantly changing, that is Maya. Right? Yes. Isn't, I, uh, are we able to see this? Because the moment you see this, you will know you are who you are right now. So you're Everyone, talking about the, uh, the image? No, no. Every moment there's an experience taking place right now also, mm -hmm. right? There's some mm -hmm. experience that is going on every moment. Mm -hmm. If it's feeling and, uh, and unconsciously also I am seeing it as me, it is Maya. Because it's an experience of the body and the ever-changing phenomenon of mental structure. Okay. Every movement of the body, 
I'm saying me and mine to it. It's Maya. The breathing of the body. I'm saying me and mine to it. It's Maya. Unconsciously, I'm doing it. I'm not saying consciously I'm this breathing of my body or I'm the movement of my body or I'm the thinking of my mind. I'm not saying it consciously. Every impermanent experience seen as me or mine is Maya. Yeah. So, so actually, yeah. clear, clear angel. Actually, I took in another perspective. That's okay. What was what were you saying? Ah, uh, the the it so accurately defines it. The impo impo permanent experience. Yeah. Impermanent. Impermanent. Yeah. Impermanence. yeah. Uh, it's all Maya, whether it's outside. I mean, outside, of course, we are still looking inside, but then that even the inside. It's actually the inside more. Outside, it's the fixed drama. Yeah, yeah. that is fixed drama. Yeah. <laughs> the moment <laughs> or notice when you look outside, then you don't have time to look inside. Yeah. Just stop exactly. <laughs> looking and then you have, you can only look either out or in. Yeah, so when I look inside, then outside looks, okay, it's all anyways, quite used, I mean, not interesting, more interesting. Yeah. What is happening here? And um, you really start to experience your bodiless, I mean, I can say you can start to know your bodiless space that you are, space like being that you are, more you are just totally letting go of any personalization of any impermanent experience. Only then can you truly be constantly what Baba is saying, constant happiness. Otherwise this mass pulls you down. Yeah. It just pulls it, the soul down. Yeah. As you said, one mass, it's not that only one and then the second is waiting for it to go. It could be like multiple at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> within an hour or within a minute, there could be multiple. Actually, every moment there is already there. See, yeah. you cannot, the soul cannot separate itself from experience as long as it's with the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, soul cannot separate itself from experience. So the only way to not suffer the experience is to know that you are not your experience. You're just a living light beyond all your experiences. And what is experience? It's a sanskar. It's a play of sanskar that is constantly taking place. Every body is like a bundle of sanskars moving. <laughs> What is a body? Bundle of sanskars moving. Five elements plus bundle of sanskars. Yes, and Baba said today a puppet bundle, yes. uh, the yes. body and what the soul in it. That... What is a person Baba asked today? Yeah. Soul using five elements. And believing itself to be those five elements, actually. And the play of sanskars. Because then he said some 84 parts and something, something, something after that. So when we see someone, we just see as a bundle of sanskars, as their body and their play of mind and body as bundle of sanskars. And then there's a soul which is living light totally beyond that experience. I can do that when I'm seeing that with me. Because <laughs> many of us get caught up in action, no? 
And moment the body is in action, it feels like I am that action. I am that movement of my body. And is there anything wrong? You have to move the body for as long as you're using the body. You've got to use it. You've got to move it. And you've got to move your, uh, use your mind also for practical purposes. So how can you really live as a soul? It's a question from many, right? <laughs> and the way to live as a soul is to know that I'm not the movement of the body and I'm not the thinking of the mind or the experiences of the body and mind. I'm really just a living light. I am not changing, but I'm enabling all this action to take place. Just knowing that I'm never changing. And you'll find yourself a little bit later, you're immersed in that. Yeah? <laughs> Maybe 10 minutes and you find yourself immersed. Yeah? That's all right. Did anything change about you? No. So the moment you realize, oh, there was an immersion, it's okay. Who realized it? The one who enabled even that immersion, that's you. And then more you will see that it is automatically what you will find is that immersion cannot take over you. Now you're more attentive rather than immersed. Right? But isn't the, uh, the one who is immersed is not the one who is the constant? Yeah. So the one I'm, who's mind in that, but uh, one that is so the being is not doesn't want to allow it but it just if it happens because it wants to stay in that uh doesn't want to immerse it wants to stay in that that combined state with baba but then when you're immersed you're actually just think you uh, become work conscious or action conscious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but you think also it is like the being is possessed in that moment or hypnotized, yeah. right? It's possessed. But still, nothing is happening to the being that you are. That is why the moment you realize that I, the being, got possessed by a certain act or a certain thought or a certain feeling or a certain experience, that very moment you are out of it. As that being who has been untouched by anything, right? Jeevan Mukti ek second me. Mm -hmm. This is so why is it, so... Uh -huh. Sorry, I interrupted. Oh. This is called, I keep reminding and pausing. And uh, is it like... I would say it's more people? knowing. Yeah, definitely pausing. Definitely, but more knowing that who am I that is coming and going into every scene of the drama? Who am I truly? Just seeing that, knowing that is constantly helping you to be that. Yeah? And to understand the ego's nature also. Ego means to understand the nature of illusion also. That illusion is nothing but feeling every experience and movement is me and mine. Yeah, that is all illusion is. Right? We were saying in the morning class, the stillness cannot know the stillness. And somebody said beautifully, uh, like the sweetness of the sugar, the sugar cannot know it. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> 
The same way the soul cannot know its stillness until it experiences some movement. Yeah? So I need to know my, my truth of being still. And then movement is not in conflict with me. I'm in so much movement throughout the day, right? But I know I am still. Then movement can't fool you and befool you and deceive you into believing you are this moving body. Yeah? Yeah. This has to be seen and known. So Baba is saying, Baba Dada continues to see the games. Baba Dada is sitting with you. And yet, you become so engrossed in your own situation, trying to face it, that you don't even realize who is with you. Because the moment personal identity takes over, there is craving and there is aversion. Right? Then action, it's like I become the action. So that's why Baba is saying. So what does Baba do then? From being the companion, Bab Dada also becomes the observer and observes your gains. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> do you not do do not do this anymore? Since you call him your companion, fulfill the responsibility of a companion. And you will find one thing that does help is slowing down your actions. Who all have slowed down their actions? Or still wanting to finish one after the other? Hmm. Good. Sister, here there are a lot of actions, a lot one after another. Mm hmm Making effort to make less. So if let's say guests are coming, is it important to cook 10 dishes or have you decided to cook two? Yeah, that, that usually doesn't happen. Uh, not too many surprises like that. But, but still a lot of actions are there. You know, work takes a lot and then the other actions also. But comparatively, yes, with the children not being, the actions have reduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I it's think the effort to, mm -hmm. like, um, even where this one works, there's, like, constant actions, one after the other, because there's, like, 10 children... <laughs> each one has some attention and but yeah I think there's once you're into that constant mm -hmm. you don't have to take the responsibility of doing and being and doing everything in many a time, many a times you will find you take on the responsibilities you did not need to I mean, out yeah. of so I think we yeah. overextend ourselves. Yeah. Overextend. Sometimes learning to say no is a good thing. Yeah. But the ego driving this body, the illusion of being a person. I have always done this. How can I now say no? How can I say no now? Isn't it? 
who has always done a person, personal identity has always done it. Not the soul. Soul is just constant. So then what does drama bring at some point to break that ego, doership ego? Body. Absolutely. Body will be bearing the brunt of that ego sooner or later. And then you'll be forced so is the suffering going to teach me or gyan going to teach me gyan mm -hmm. <laughs> so if gyan is going to teach me then might as well just Not everything is your responsibility. You're not becoming irresponsible. You're just handing over certain things to others also to do what they need to do. You're not like, I'm the all man show, doing all everything. One man show. I'm such a doer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. Exactly the same lines I found in this one Murli I was reading earlier. As you just said, the Baba says, you do not even have the awareness that you are doing anything. Mm -hmm. Everything just continues to happen automatically. Mm -hmm. So to the result of karma and the performing of actions will continue but you will not have any awareness of it. Then actions are falling off you. I am doing it. I am the doer will not be there. Won't be there. Actions are always still in, remain there in the consciousness I'm doing this one I have to do this one it's not and, completely completely unaware of whatever we do yeah and that perpetuates personal identity yeah that's true but the what this one line was reading and I was so my baba okay <laughs> it, it, because and the moment even we just breathing, coughing of everything. I'm coughing, I'm sneezing, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, so I'm moving, I am thinking, I am exactly. doing this. Yeah. Baba said in the Murli, when you say I in the mind, we have to say I the soul. Every time yeah. you use I, the, we should have that the I, the soul, not like I, yeah. the body. Of the what person. does that mean in practical? Yeah. The power says two, two, I, two eyes. One eye will fall you, other eye will <laughs> fly you. <laughs> and we are not saying I am thinking. It's just thinking is happening as I, Rini. That is the thing. Our mind is not saying, oh, I, Rini, am thinking. I really am moving the body. I really am breathing. Mind is not speaking like that. But this is how the language is recorded. It's the language it's, is recorded in this way. So now personalized. It's silently personalized as me. Unconsciously personalized. All the movement and the change of the mind and the change of the experience of the body and mind is automatically, unconsciously personalized. Even now, my hands moving, my body moving, my mouth speaking, either being am not awake to the truth that I am silent and still, this is personalized automatically by default. By default. 
I don't have to do much. It's automatically Rini speaking, Rini doing this, all, all of this. I don't even have to say I and mind to it. It's just there, hidden somewhere. True? And these are all experiences, impermanent experiences. So this I have to start seeing. That pure silence still me and that ever-changing and moving body and the personal identity. This person personal identity and ever-changing experience within me, the being. Then I can really be in action and yet be aware that I am that stillness that can make this action take place. Then it's possible. Otherwise, Half the time we will be caught up in action. Then we will say, oh, I forgot. Let me remind myself who I am. And then again, I will forget. Then again and again, I will try to remind myself. And this we will continue to play till the end, which is also fine. Which is also fine. It's just the way part is playing out. No problem. But there is this another beautiful option we all have. Yeah. Most important thing is this. Baba's for, for that's why for Baba, the highest awareness is being the embodiment of experience. And being the embodiment of experience, I know I, the soul, can only experience change. I cannot experience me. I can know me and be me, but I cannot be. I cannot experience me. But I can know me and I can be me. And I can experience all the change. The one who can get this is free forever now. Sister, the virtues of the soul or the qualities of the soul of peace and love, it can experience it. It can right? know it. Soul can know it and be it. And experience. in being is when it experiences it. The one Who's the one who's experiencing it? Is your mind experiencing your peace? Is your mind experiencing your joy? and your love, and your power. And that is why for some time you experience it. And then what happens? Until the next cloud comes. <laughs> Until the next cloud comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. So the soul is love. Soul, soul is. is. It, it is when it's, it's knowing yeah. It knows its truth, it's knowing. And then you're right, the mind may experience it. The mind will experience. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it will experience something else, right? And it is creating all these thoughts, feelings, emotions. By nature of the mind, it is constantly thinking, constantly creating the play of sanskars, right? That's the very nature of the mind, Right? And I, the being, can experience the mind also. It's ever-changing nature. But I know the one that is really me, that is beyond all experiences, is untouched by any ever-changing experiences and the nature of the mind. Then, doesn't matter what act I'm playing, I know this whole, this whole thing is just a play of body sanskars and the mind sanskars. This whole package of body and mind sanskars is not me. Then it doesn't matter how much the robot moves, who cares? <laughs> how much the voice box speaks, who cares? I'm beyond it all. I'm just a living light. Silent and still. 
then that awareness that I am, it's not I have the awareness. Rini cannot have awareness. Either being an awareness and then my attention is on Baba in a natural way. And then what Baba feels or what Baba knows is what I know. Then that is what is expressed through my roles, through my actions, through my words and through my thoughts. That is why the highest time in the entire cycle is being the soul in corporeal, in the corporeal at this time in diamond age. It's not even being in the home is the highest stage. Highest stage is here. <laughs> yeah, Professor, your conference is the diamond age. Yeah. Higher than golden age. Golden age. Even home, <laughs> higher than that. Is now. Yeah. yeah, so can you see? This moving, this speaking, nothing is me, but everything is happening according to whatever is in the script. It's taking place. Like one of the souls was telling me, I don't know why I'm doing Baba Seva. It's just happening. I'm not thinking. It's just happening. I'm like, this is fantastic. This is how it's supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, in your part, in others' part, it may not be, but at least in your part, this is beautiful. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm just doing it. Something is making me do it. Actions are falling off me, like Sister Rupa just read. I'm not doing it. Very clear that soul was, I'm not doing it. It's just happening. And I could see it very clearly in their words, what they are meaning. They're really pointing to their truth. So when somebody asks me, why are you doing? I don't know. It's just happening. I don't know. I'm never planning anything. Things just happen. And there's no feeling of tiredness in that. No, then there is no tiredness. And doership if or even anything. Even tiredness do come, it's also seen as part of a passing phenomenon. It's like that instrument, somebody playing an instrument. Yeah. And doesn't know that it's being played. Exactly. <laughs> the instrument doesn't realize how it's going, what is the method, what is it's just it's just happening. It's according to the script. A robot has been fed with certain script and it's just playing it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's just keyed in. And it's just happening. So like Baba says, Karan Karan. Then, then you know sure. Baba is Karan Karan. Yeah. Yeah. And that soul does so much, but doesn't know that it's just doesn't know why I'm doing. I don't know why I'm doing. <laughs> it's just happening. Not even because I feel good or something. It's just happening. And that is what really Baba is telling us. Yeah. If we fulfill the companionship responsibility with Baba, then actions will happen. Don't let your mind make you think otherwise. Make you believe something otherwise. That, oh, if you don't think, actions won't happen. Actions will happen. <laughs> Nothing stops the actions. You just stay combined with Baba and action that needs to unfold will unfold. So it's like a karma yogi. In yeah. yoga with Baba whilst the karmas are yeah. happening. Yeah. Trust me, action will happen every moment. It won't stop. 
but I have to do it. Observe even that thought with detachment. Yeah. And sister, I've noticed when we yoga with Baba, if certain actions were missed, like if certain actions were important and missed. Were, were important and wanted mm -hmm. the soul wanted to do, somebody mm -hmm. else steps up and proposes it or does it or mm -hmm. offers it. You know, mm -hmm. they just line up the things for you. Yeah. You know, a few yeah. times it has seen that. Yeah. That it's that the thought is that it has to be done, and then somebody's just saying, Boom, we are yeah. meeting or we're doing this, and this is what we are doing. Yeah. <laughs> so just be with him now. But the mind like ba Baba, touch, Baba touches some, invokes somebody else to come and do it for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That has been. Yeah, everything just orchestrates itself very beautifully if you are combined with him. It's like he's a conductor, no? He can orchestrate the entire. Um, what do you call? Group of musicians that are sitting there. Orchestra. Orchestra. He can orchestrate. Just give him a chance. <laughs> Yeah. What you need to hear, you will hear. What you need to speak will be spoken. Don't worry. Drama is fixed. <laughs> it will be done. You just stay with him, be with him, talk to him, do everything with him. Everything will happen. And you will not even feel you have done anything. And mind and intellect and sanskars, the old ones, can still speak. They can still have their own commentary and their own way of uh, being there in the background, but it will not influence you. Yeah. So you mean mind, intellect and sanskars is like an orchestra, right? They play their own part whenever it needs to be. Yeah. So if I don't use the old nature of it, then they will be conducted by Baba. I'm a you bit know? confused. Where does Baba the intellect come into work? So See, intellect is the one that brings the image, right? Of the thought that is created by the mind. True? So the mind can create a thought about a meeting you may have after 15 minutes. True? And it will also then intellect will bring the images based upon who will you be with in the meeting as Seema. So it will first bring the image of person Seema and then it will bring the image of other persons going to be part of that meeting. True? That's what intellect will do. Then sanskars is the, just the past impressions will also bring up feelings with it, with whatever feeling and story that is associated with those persons, including your own person that you, the soul is playing. So already this entire thing is playing in the mind, intellect and sanskars in the form of a scene in your mind. True? Now Baba is saying, you surrender the old mind to me. So when this story play is going on in my mind, I just allow Baba to take over and I stay combined with him, totally being aware and noticing that this is all happening in my mind. It's already imagining and created an entire feeling and a uh, way of how it's going to be conducted that meeting. But I surrender. I and Baba, I know nothing. You use me as I need to be used by you 
as you want to serve all the souls. So the intellect is combined with Baba, right? That's why in Hindi oh. they call Buddhi Yoga. Yeah, but the soul is using whose intellect? Not the old intellect. Few days ago, Baba had said, no, there are two types of intellect. Old and new, something like that, I can't remember. But you're not using old mind and old intellect. Because intellect is trapped in the mind today. Right? Baba use of Paris Buddhi and uh, Devya Buddhi. Yeah, but even that has to be cleared, right? Otherwise, we give too much importance to what? Buddhi more than the soul. Is that true? Who's giving more importance to Buddhi than the soul? Buddhi is not neutral. Mind is not neutral. Soul is neutral. Sanskars are not neutral. Soul is neutral. So I, the soul first, has to wake up. Then I can use whatever I want to use with Baba. I actually use Baba's mind, intellect, and sanskars. Right? But I, the soul first, need to be awake. Our entire focus here is Awaken to your eternal Anadi Swarup as a soul. Then forget about mind, intellect and sanskar. That when the master is awake, will automatically they will be serving the master. But if you give too much importance either to mind or to intellect or to sanskars and think they are neutral, you are trapped already. They are using you. You're not using them. Parasnath has to wake up now first. <laughs> For anything Paras to awaken. Hmm? Does Baba say, my buddhi is more important than me? Does Baba give any importance to his mind, intellect and sanskars or they just serve him without having any say of their own? Hmm? Hmm? Uses them as a master. Yeah. Self-serving. Yeah. So the soul has to know himself. Then I don't even have to say, oh, I'm using my mind or I'm using my intellect or I'm using this and scar and that. All of them are naturally lined up to serve me. <laughs> Does that make it clear, Seema? So that's why Baba is saying, why do you move away from him? The father does not like that. The father is saying it to the soul, right? Baba is not saying it to the intellect or the mind. Baba is speaking like this to the soul. Right. <laughs> yeah. The father does not like that. The father has the pure wish that each of you, my child, be and you truly are a self-sovereign and thereby one who has a right to world sovereignty. Self-sovereign means soul that is a master of its mind, intellect, and sanskars. Hmm? Are you all part of the subjects? You do not wish to be the subject, do you? When will you be the subject? When you are the subject to your subjects in your inner mm -hmm. world. <laughs> then when you the ministers rule us. Yeah. To your ministers, the king is the subject. 
then the king will, the one, the soul that is actually the king will also play the part of the subject because that's what it has practiced in confluence age. Yeah. Does that make it clear? Yeah, because I know in Sakar Murli's we hear buddhi, buddhi use karo, but Baba is speaking to the self-sovereign soul. And if the self-sovereign soul is hearing it, it would be easy to kind of connect the dots. Otherwise, we give too much importance to buddhi, more than it deserves actually. It's first the soul. Then yes, my tools are good tools. I can use them. They're important tools. So you are kings, are you not? Yeah, the soul that is awake will automatically use pure mind. Somebody is saying, yes, absolutely. Asking this question. Can old mind not deceive by using form of knowledgeable mind, knowledgeable mind? Yes, old mind, Baba said no. Bahurupi Maya will keep coming into many different forms. You see this form, then the next form is ready. Then the next form is ready. Then the next form is ready. Till the end, it will keep bringing its different, different forms. So what? Till the end, you will keep battling? No. Just know that... Even the one that is winning and losing in the mind is not you. You're beyond victory and defeat. This has to be very clear because we identified with the victorious thought and we disidentify with the loser thought in the mind. But actually, the moment you identify with the victorious, you will also identify with the loser. And then you will say, why am I really not feeling Baba all the time? And the verse is also when you identified with the loser action also. Yeah. That is even more dampening. Yeah. If you identify the level of mind, then action is automatic consequence of it. Mm -hmm. Neither is the victorious thought you, nor is the loser thought you. They both are pointing at the one who's beyond victory and defeat. So if a thought comes, a very nasty, hideous thought comes. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> hideous. <laughs> yeah? And it comes with a very strong feeling also. Now, mind will automatically create a feeling of a loser there. So, man of man is both ego, actually. That's what they say, right? Yeah, absolutely. And even a thought feeling that comes with it. Yeah. Even this thought and the feeling that comes with it, oh, I'm losing, I'm not feeling good, I should not be having this thought or I should be having something else instead of this, I should not be feeling this way. That's a loser identity that is taking, beginning to take over. Be aware, notice, you are beyond that loser and then another thought comes. Okay, I am like the father. I am God-like being. I am beautiful, divine being of light. And now I start feeling, now that thought is me. I have won over this thought. You're not even that thought of victory. <laughs> Are you? So not of victory, but then even if one is saying that I am point of light, I'm a pure light, and I'm not that. You are not saying it's, your mind is speaking. That so, so the mind is speak the mind, but the victory word, yeah. But if it's but even if we are kind of churning on the qualities of the soul that time. Who is churning? No, the soul itself knows itself. 
you know yeah. the soul knows it's true yeah. soul doesn't yeah. need that awakening and the reminder the mind could be speaking anything yeah but the mind that's what is happening no you're preferring that thought of victory over the thought of loss yeah that is you are preferring yeah. and yeah preferences the feeling, yeah. yeah the feeling of victory over the feeling of loss of a loser yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, that feeling that is... was comfortable. That feeling is more comfortable. True? Yeah, it, it was kind of noticed or it was uh, observed mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. for the potluck, you know, this one had cooked baba and it was not did even taste and something. And there, the whole thing had finished like very, very quickly and you know, and then it was lingering that thought because a lot of people were asking their recipes and stuff like that. And you could see that how the person identity wanted that thought to linger longer in the head of replaying mm -hmm. of uh, <laughs> how everybody's gaga over that vegetarian food and asking this and no, no meat lasagnas or zitis or chilies were eaten. Everybody was eating nirus. <laughs> it was crazy to see how the mind wants to preference is there to hold that experience and stretching it longer and longer. Yeah. And doesn't want anything else. And was kind of saying, what if it was the opposite? Would it have liked to get rid of it? You know, that's what mind would have done. Yeah. So can you see both are talking to each other is yeah. observed by who? Right. You're beyond and it, both. And how mind kind of tricks us to hold on to some experience yeah. for extended time. Now this was for food. It could be a spiritual experience of being a soul in the home of light. And experiencing, oh, I am that tiny bodiless star and I'm experiencing myself to be like God in the home of light. And I'm feeling so wonderful, so light. And now I want to stretch that experience, as you said. I want to hold on to it. This is also trying to be experienced through the mind and the body. Yeah. Then you're wanting to know yourself through your mind. Although mind can experience that. But mind will also experience something else sometime soon. Very soon actually. So you can see, okay, this was mind trying to reflect my beauty. And this is mind trying to show me something else. I'm neither this nor that. I'm beyond both. This is the absolute state. Otherwise, there's a preference of this particular experience as me over this experience as me in the mind. Does that make it clear? Mm -hmm. How do you differentiate between pure mind and old mind with duality? Pure mind has got no separate identity. That is why we don't use mind, mind as mind, I, the soul using mind. Pure mind has no separate identity. But old mind has created a separate identity. And this constant duality of good and bad in it. True? What's the difference between old man and Maya man? I have it's been hearing same. Maya man and this is the first yeah. time I've Old heard mind it. and Maya mind is the same thing actually. Same Maya thing. mind is scripted mind and old mind is also scripted mind. And Baba doesn't want us to use the scripted mind. Pure mind and soul are kind of one. I mean, in the sense the pure mind is in alignment completely with the soul. 
completely. It has no separation from the soul. Like in Anadi Swaru, mind, intellect and sanskars are completely merged. They don't have a separate identity. That is the pure mind, pure intellect and pure sanskars. They just don't know their existence separate from the soul. Yeah? And that is the Anadi Absolute Swarup Baba is asking us to see. Nothing wrong with mind giving you beautiful experiences, showing you beautiful spiritual aspect of your truth. Nothing wrong with it. But just don't say I and mind even to that experience. That is all. That is all. I know it's temporary. I know it will be there for a few minutes and it will go. Nothing great about it. And I'm no better than others because of it. <laughs> because it can create its own subtle ego. Oh, I get so many experiences. I'm so good. And it will also create attachment and clinging to those. To that and experience. Yeah. And when you don't have the other, and when you have the other experience, you will resist it and fight it and want to get rid of it. You won't feel good again yeah. back. Exactly. Back or that exactly. is another. <laughs> yeah. So that is why it's okay. Great. My mind gave me a beautiful experience. Now my mind is giving me an ugly experience. It's all the same to me. Because I know I am not changing. That is all. And the sister, long back, a murli me aya tha, anubhavo ki authority bano. Murli ka title hi shari tha, Sunday ki murli me na. So uske baad, do minute batayenge, mala anubhavo ki authority bano. So, yehi hum bol rahe hain actual me. I think, I don't know, aapne kal aur aaj kab attend start ki hai class karna. Kar raha, aaj kabhi kar rahe hain. अच्छा तो हम यही बोल रहे हैं कि अनुभव की अथॉरिटी का मतलब है आत्मा जिसको अपने अंदर के सारे सॉरी सोल दैट नोज ऑल द एक्सपीरियंसेस विद इन इट एज जस्ट अ पासिंग फिनोमिनन अ टेंपरेरी फ्लीटिंग फिनोमिनन बट सोल इटसेल्फ इज अ भोक्ता एक्सपीरियंस मींस नोइंग ऑफ योर एब्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ इज बीइंग द एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस Thank you, sister. Yeah. Om Shanti, Didi. Om Shanti. Uh, Didi, you were saying about pure mind, right? Uh, so pure mind uh, in Satyuk, which mind is mind activated? Why do you have interest in Satyuk? So many people have interest. What <laughs> obsession is this mind? It's just all of you. It's not just all of you. It's just all of you. Uh, no, I'm just trying to understand. Understand you first. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, yeah. All of us. Not just you, sister, but all of us. Yeah, uh, but, the, yes. but uh, uh, yeah. it was uh, the question clicked uh, just that uh, in Satyu, which mind are we using? How does it matter? I, the soul, am away? Does it matter okay. for the mind what instrument is being used? No. Does the soul think over there, I'm using a mind and intellect and sanskar? Soul doesn't know. Hmm. So be interested in who you are rather than your toolbox. Okay. Go into the depth of who you are, then the mind and intellect and sanskars will automatically be serving you. You don't need to know so much about the mind. Your obsession to bahar ki dunia ka hai. Don't make it a Brahmin obsession. Okay. Hmm. Let the soul be obsessed with itself and Baba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah. And it's for all of us. Such an obsession. Buddhi, man, sanskar. <laughs> Are, what about the soul? <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. What about the one who's really making it all function? Ever thought about you? Interested in you? <laughs> hmm? You don't need to think about you. You just need to know you. That is all. That's all. If you think about you, then mind becomes activated again. Although mind will think about you. Mind wants to think about you. It will do that also. But you know that you are beyond the thinking of mind. That is thinking about you as a soul. Yeah. So be so interested in you, then what you are saying, pure mind, is automatically there to serve you. Even now, not only in golden age, but in confluence age, it is serving you. That is why sometimes it will give you such beautiful experiences anytime. It's not just Amrit Vela. It could be anytime throughout the day. It could give you such beautiful experiences with Baba also. It can reflect your beauty, but it won't be permanent. It will be temporary. Just know that. Yeah, experiences are always changing. Yeah. So just don't say anything to minds, intellects, and sanskars service as owning it to be you. No, everything Baba is doing, Baba is giving. What he's using, it is his lookout. I am a soul combined with God. What mind he uses, what intellect he uses, what sanskars he uses, let it be his headache, not yours. Isn't right. it easy? Much easier. <laughs> let yeah. it be Why do you yeah. want to make it so difficult? <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's a habit to go into the details. Maybe that's why. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. It's good to go into the details. Now, you, that same sanskar, you, the soul, will use of going into the detail of you and Baba together. <laughs> yeah. That is more important. That is more important. The combined company of Baba and I. And in that detail, you will find there is only silence. Yeah. Yeah. But because silence is not tolerated by the mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long it habit. Some doing. It needs some doing to be who it is. Who what it thinks I am a soul and I want to be a soul. It wants to keep doing something to be a soul. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We we just have to notice that habit of the mind also. That's all. Nothing wrong. We just have to notice that habit. Yeah, silence is not tolerated by the mind. Okay, this is Shanti. But does that answer the question? Uh, no, it uh, basically uh, you don't need to think about the answer, no. So. I rather than focusing on the question, maybe I be with Baba, that is more important. Yeah, you the soul being with Baba and what mind does and what mind doesn't do, I have already surrendered it all to God. Man mana bhava ho gaya. <laughs> it doesn't belong to me anymore. <laughs> it belongs to God. Let him do whatever he wants to do with it. Let me the soul be with him. That's it. <laughs> what he wants to do, how he wants to use it's his look yeah. You just be with Baba and his soul. <laughs> yeah. Whether I'm using my intellect to be with him, whether I'm using my mind to be with him, what sanskar I'm using, it's again mind getting activated. Yeah. Make it yeah. easy. Make it easy for us. Be merciful to yourself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's for all of us, yeah? This is not just for one soul behind Sonali. It's for everyone. Yeah? So you are the king. Are you not? And we finish it here. You are the emperors, the world kings. 
You are those who create subjects, not those who become the subjects. So important. So I'm creating subjects first in my own mind. My mind, intellect, and sanskars are my subjects. They are not my masters. So I've created subjects here first, I the king so. Yeah. Then Baba is saying that you are those who will become kings, are you not? So where does a king sit? He sits on a throne, does he not? When someone has the intoxication of being the king, he remains seated on the throne in a practical way. So do not get off your throne of a detached observer. Can a mindset become a detached observer? Ever? No. But can the soul observe different mindsets? Yes. Big difference. Because even before coming into this knowledge, this one was practicing many other different aspects of different branches of the tree. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Buddhism is all about different mindsets. Yeah? And Baba's knowledge is all about the soul. It's all mindfulness and mindsets. And Baba's knowledge is all about the soul. Big difference. But isn't it also impermanence and watching and observing? It is, that... but as a mind only you are doing it. Right? Like I was practicing Buddhism before I came here, right? For four, five years. One has also. And never the idea of soul just wasn't very clear ever. But I was watching my mindsets and there was some great success also in that to some extent. But the clarity was just not there that I'm that being within me, all of this exists. Within me, there is a recording of 84 parts. Within me, there is this whole aspect of variety of sanskaras. I had no clue. Which, why, which is why it was still half-baked cookie. <laughs> half-baked cookie, whatever you want to call it. Yeah? Half-baked it was, but it was half-baked. Who is Baba? I had no clue. There's no concept of God in it. There's no truth. I would not even say God was a concept. It not even existed actually. It's only in Baba's knowledge you really get all this clarity. So yeah, these ideas of detached observer, all of this I was very familiar with even before coming into Baba's Gyan. Very familiar. But the clarity and the power of it was fully realized with Baba's knowledge and Baba's company. <laughs> so that's the beauty. That's why now do not get off your throne of a detached observer. Okay? Because otherwise when you make effort for something specific, in many different things, you get tired. No. Today you paid attention to your thoughts. Tomorrow you will pay attention to your words or your con connections and relationships. You get tired doing this. Just make this one effort of not coming off your throne of a detached observer. That's all that is needed. Just this one thing of who you are combined with God and be detached from everything. Every feeling, every experience, every thought, everything is impermanent. It's not your truth. Hmm? More you see that you're not wearing the subtle clothing of your feelings that are coming constantly, moment by moment, 
you are observer of all these moments that are happening, coming, going, all of that is happening. So you don't need to keep the company. You know you are combined. Then you can keep. If you try to keep the company of Baba without knowing you are combined, you can never keep Baba's company. But actually the very first step is to know I am already combined. The mind will say, but I'm not experiencing it. It's okay. Don't believe whatever it says. It's speaking many things which you do not want to understand. Because it's only speaking that which has been given as a recording. Yeah? So don't listen to it. Just know the bodiless being can only be with the bodiless father. The rest is all imaginary game going on in your mind and then manifesting in the world. You just need to know who you are. And that is not another belief system that your mind is creating. But as you know, from there you will start seeing through self-observation process, through introspection, when you see that you stop wearing any feeling that comes, I see with Baba and I share with Baba and I allow Baba to take it, absorb it like a sponge. Who am I without that feeling? Just a pure silent being. Then another thought comes, I see it with Baba. I let Baba absorb it. Who am I without that thought? I am a silent, thoughtless being. Another experience comes. It could be everything that is happening. Just ordinary feeling coming. Familiarity with someone in an interaction. Not feeling, being able to be conscious as a soul feeling is also coming. I see it with Baba that all of this is simply a passing experience. And I allow Baba to absorb it. And I know that I, the being, am forever combined. More you stop wearing these feelings of thoughts, clothing of thoughts, you will see a bodiless state. You will start feeling it's naturally there. It's naturally there. Yeah? Baba is here for you to only absorb all that which you believe to be you. That is all he's there for. Yeah? So it should be just pay attention to that one thing. Who am I? Combined with Baba. And don't wear any feeling, any thought, any emotion and you will find that you will experience your changeless truth very soon. Again, this experience is not that which comes and goes. It is your knowing that will become very clear. Yeah? Whatever comes, no matter how much it feels like you, body is moving. Baba, I am still with you and body is moving. Moving very fast because it needs to move fast to get to that next appointment. It's okay. But I am still with you and body needs, body is moving fast. We both are experiencing the speed of the movement. That's fine. It's okay. Baba and I are experiencing it together. Then you will never say I to that experience. Yeah, this is the beauty of Baba. He makes things very simple for you. That's why you share life with God. Okay? All right, we finish it here. Om Shanti. Thank you, Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Oh,
Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba.